to the internet, right? This is basically what it looks like. Um, <laughs> all right. So this is the, the Swabots. We're going to like continue to use these. It just stands, again, for students will be able to. And that is in, explain in general how the internet works, right? You're all web developers now. And it would be crazy, you being a web developer, that your friend's like, oh my god, you're a developer. Great, that's awesome. Listen, like, what is the internet? And you're like, ah, that's not, <laughs> that's not an okay response as a developer. So we're going to kind of go over that, right? We're going to define what the World Wide Web is, describe some client-server model. I'll explain what all that means. And then utilize the browser to make this request and see a response. I talked to you a little bit about this on Friday. You probably don't remember because you got lit and had a good weekend. So you're like, oh, mod one's done, yeah. And then some random Asian dude came by and talked to you for like five minutes. You're like, whatever. Um, great. <laughs> Practice making a web server with Rack. I think this was part of the labs over the weekend. If you did not do it, don't worry. I'm just going to walk you through it super fast. And then this afternoon, we will do a lecture on Sinatra. And I will actually break down that whole thing. But I need you to feel the pain of like trying to figure it out on your own for a little bit. And then that way, you can come in with some questions and some sort of knowledge base before I like dive into it. Is that fair? Yeah. Great. Oh, wow. Nice. Awesome. Cool. So I'm not going to really go into the history of the internet. Not really. It's not really important. The bottom line is, what is the internet? Does anyone know? Nobody? I mean, you listen to Avi for like three hours. Cool. A network? Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> All connected by? Yes. So the internet is just a bunch of wires, right? Very good. I noticed you guys can read. Noise. All right. It's just a bunch of wires. So if you take a look all the way down here, boop, this is, this is basically what the internet looks like right now. Yeah. Except it doesn't really say, like, stand clear of the closing doors, please, right? The idea here is that this is just what the internet looks like. Um, they're all just wires. So, for example, who here has, like, ever moved ever in their entire life? You've moved before? Yes. What's the first thing you do? Yeah, you, like, install internet, right? It's 2019. It's crazy. Like, you don't even need a bed. I'll sleep on the floor. Let's get that Wi-Fi in. <laughs> How do you do it? You pay for the Verizon, right? So what happens is somebody, you have to call somebody, right? Because we cannot connect directly to the internet, this like large connection. So what we do is we hire somebody to provide us with that connection to the internet, right? So there's a service that they provide, and that is the internet. That's why they're called an internet service provider, right? Smart. So what they do is they literally come by at the most convenient time of the day uh, and they say, great, listen, we'll be at your apartment in about four days between the hours of 8.30 and 7. I'm like, great, can't wait. Um, I, I literally did this the other day and I was like, can I get like a two or three hour window? I'm like, sir, we don't do that. He's like, okay. Okay, which that was optimized. But either way, the point is, they come by and they literally run a cable, right? Have you seen like the telephone poles and all like the wires? They will literally run a cable right into your apartment. Then they will drill a hole in your wall and then feed it in. And the whole time you're like, yes, the internet. I hope that doesn't come out of my deposit, but that's fine. And then what happens with that cable? What do you do? Right, the cable connects to a modem which is how the internet service provider regulates your internet. And who here like hard lines their laptop right into that, that modem? One person? No, nobody? What do you do? I have a little desktop, so I have to connect to it. Otherwise, I don't have to do like ADS.com anymore. Because it just provides you Okay. You said a lot of smart things, but the key word there is like Wi-Fi, Wi -Fi. right? You guys use like Wi-Fi, you know, like this wireless technology. You know how nice it is? God, last night, I'm just going to tell you a quick story. Last night, my phone was dying. 
and like 4%, risked it. Then I plugged it in, and I was like looking at memes for a little bit. You know how nice it is for that thing to hit like 70, 80%, and then you unplug it and just like roll over on the other side of the bed? <laughs> <laughs> wires, man, wires. So the thing, the thing is we use Wi-Fi, right? We plug our modem into a router, and then that router literally beams this internet and then we can connect to it. Right? We're not going to get into the specifics of how that works. We can talk about it offline if you're really interested. But that's the idea of how the internet works. It comes across, there are just a series of wires that are interconnected all the way up until it hits literally your apartment. And then that's when you hook it up to a router and that router will beam that internet wirelessly. Cool? On one of the comments of Bobby's videos, this guy goes into in-depth explanation of how Wi-Fi works. It's actually pretty interesting. Yeah. The way it's get propagated through the X channel is just hard. Yeah, it is wild. Like literally the Wi-Fi waves, they're invisible, right? Magic. Are just bouncing around us right now. Right? So if you want at any moment, you're just like attacking data. <laughs> Alright, cool. Any questions on like what the internet really is? Alright. Wow, thank you. Did the, did, the last did the last class tell you to do this? Because I, I have literally asked them to. I'm like, hey, listen, at some point, just, just shout no or like respond to the questions. All right, let's, let's take a look at this outline here, and I'm just going to go over what this is, right? So brief, brief history, because it's kind of not super important. It started at Stanford in UCLA, something called the ARPANET. I'm going to Google in the middle of class often because I just want you to see, one, what I Google, right, and two, like how I Google, and that's kind of important. And the idea here is, boop, oh man, that's a low-res photo. What about this one? Oh, powerful. Cool. So Stanford, right, somewhere over here, and UCLA, somewhere over here, they were connected. They were like the first ones to actually like set up this connection. You ever heard of a famous individual? Like Alexander Graham Bell, a little telephone action. Yes? All right. Literally just ran a wire from one person to the next and was like, yeah, I'm going to call you. Watch this. And that's basically what this World Wide Web is. It's just these two computers got hooked up, and they actually just decided to try to see over this connection, can I send some data over? And what they wanted to send was this word called login, right? Pretty standard word. Yeah? Do you guys know the story? All right, so they sent over one letter at a time, one byte at a time. So the first thing that came through was L, the next thing that came through was O, and then it crashed. It was like, nope. The server literally failed, right? The connection fails. But it's proof of concept. And so there's like this theory where like this first internet connection failed until like, We've been cursed forever, right? It's like original sin. You guys have like a presentation, your Mob 1 presentation. Did it go like perfectly smooth? It went exactly how you wanted it to go? It did? Oh, all right. Well, you know, thanks Stanford and UCLA. It's their fault. Cool. And that's basically what happened. Then they started wiring up other universities because the idea was that we wanted to share like knowledge, right? If I hooked up all the universities, then a school like, I don't know, some loser school in New York City, like St. John's over here, all right? <laughs> well, I mean, you guys probably figured out where I went to school, right? <laughs> cool. Yeah, thank you. Very good. You guys are all sleuths. Sherlock Holmes over here. So if St. John's wanted some information about research that, say, another school, right, like Oregon, or like Florida State is doing, if they hook up their computers to the university computers, then we can essentially send data over and kind of share information. And that's really what the World Wide Web is, and that's what the internet is. Just a bunch of sharing information, just a bunch of people sharing information with each other. Isn't that crazy? It's powerful. All right, cool, let's move on. All right, there's a gentleman by the name of Vinton Cerf, all right, invented something called the TCP. Does everyone know what this stands for? No. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. 
right? It's the transmission control protocol, right? When you hear this, typically you also hear another two letters. Does anyone know what that is? Right, IP, right? So you hear something called TCP IP, and that is essentially just the way in which we break down this information. So I had this like really stupid GIF um, that you've probably seen, this one. And really what it is is like all your data, eventually, every single thing will break down into what is known as a byte. It is a very tiny piece of memory that gets transmitted literally at the speed of light through these wires and then it gets broken down. Right? Let's say you have like this sweet 4K image meme that you're just dying to send your best friend. It doesn't come through all at once in this image. Every single part of that image is broken down into a chunk, sent over this wire, and then reassembled on the other end. Do you guys have internet in the 90s? Am I alone in saying like you know what net zero is? No. Netscape? Yeah. AOL? Yeah. Cool. Do you remember like downloading image and it would be like, like line for line? That's the TCP working. You know? And that's what's happening. The problem, right, is that if you break something down, you need instructions on how to reassemble it. Does that make sense? Like if you were to take apart a watch, you'd be like, oh, this is fun. And you just like took out like all the little cogs. And then what happens? You're like, okay, great, put it back together. You're like, ah. Sorry, thousand dollars down the drain, right? But if there were literally a set of instructions that were like, hey, if you have this piece and this item, it goes in first right here. And then this goes right here second. This goes right here third. That's the protocol of what TCP is. So a protocol is just a set of instructions of how to break something down and then reassemble it. And that's basically how data gets sent back over the internet. It gets sent very quickly and it gets sent at the speed of light. So. What a beautiful time to be alive, right? And so that's really what TCP is. Are there any questions on this? No. <laughs> I love that. Just give, just give like two seconds in case someone does. Uh, all right. Let's let's talk about uh, HTTP. Right? What does this stand for? Okay. Hype or something. Very good. So another thing that's popping up over here, something called protocol, right? Hypertext transfer protocol. And really what it is is just the protocol for how this hypertext is transmitted. We can see hypertext right here. Boop. You've seen this before, the inspector? Powerful tool, right? I just right clicked and hit inspect. As you get good, you can hit command option J and it will open up the inspector for you. So in case you want to see it, manual styles. Boop. That's all it did, all right? And you can literally see the HTML that comes through. So HTTP is like a way that the, H, the hypertext is transferred, how it's sent over and how it's received. Cool? Awesome. What is HTML? Okay, cool, all right. The best programming language there is, right? Wow. Three weeks into dev work and you're already starting to get snarky. Very good. <laughs> this is not a programming language. It is a markup language. And all it means is that Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Opera, Blackberry, remember those? Trash. Either way, sorry I was on the recording. Ignore that. Um, the idea is here that the browser knows how to get this HTML and knows how to paint it and render it on the screen. All right, so let's go to a very plain and simple website, like old Google. Great, pretty simple website. This is what the hypertext looks like after it's been processed by the browser and then rendered properly on the screen. However, this is just what the HTML looks like. So let's do this. So this is the HTML and this is what comes of it. it this is not a great user experience, right? This thing on the right, but this is. And so what the markup language is, is like, how do I style this text and render it a certain way on the screen? That's what that markup language really means. Cool? Cool. Oh. Oh.
Oh, wow, thanks. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is something called IP addresses. Does anyone know what that is? That is exactly what it is. Number, number, <laughs> dot, number, dot, number, 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 right? Here's what's going on. You ever, um, man, I guess it seems like a fairly older class. Do you guys remember remembering phone numbers? Yeah. You guys remember that? Yeah. yeah? What a time to be alive, right? How many phone numbers do you remember right now? That's it. <laughs> That's it. I don't even know my girlfriend's phone number. Just my mom's. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, you know what? Saying that out loud is terrible. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I said I don't even know my girlfriend's number. You're trying to get me to say it twice. <laughs> Fell for it. Embarrassing. Um, but I know my mom's phone number, right? I'm a big old mama's boy. So... The idea here is, how do you reference people in your phone? By their name, maybe? Or a nickname, right? Like, I have a friend, I just call him, like, Dummy. It's like, my phone is Dummy. That's not his real name, obviously. But I'm like, yo, what up, dog? And it just says Dummy on the top. Um, thank you. Yeah. All right. And the idea here is that with IP addresses, an IP address is just your address on the internet where you are like this computer this laptop the I IP address for it will just be like number number dot number number dot number number and that way people can visit me if they want to just like your address at home right you have like an address like I was gonna say mine I don't want to do that recording like one two three fake street right like you can come by my house and just like hang out see what's in my living room judge me eat my food drink my beer and leave right and so the idea here is that the IP address is the same thing. This is just Google.com. This is easy to remember. And so what we can do is all of you have something called the network utility. And what you can do is like, let's say I want to, I want to go to Facebook.com. I can go to something called Traceroute. So Unix-based systems like Mac and Linux-based systems have something like this. You can hit Trace, and then you can just stop it. And you see this? Boom! Look at that. This is the IP address for Facebook. This is where Facebook lives on the internet. Who here wants to log into Facebook and go, all right, real quick, let me go 31.13.71.36 and just be like, cool, I'm gonna go check to see what's happening with my friends. Nobody, that'd be crazy, but we can. I could just go right here, right? I hope I'm not logged in because I don't want you to judge me. So I'm just gonna open an incognito window. <laughs> and there it is, book face. And so this IP address just maps to the domain in the same way that a phone book would take a phone number and then have like a name next to it. And all you have to do is to remember the name. It will process the phone number in the background for you. Cool? Make sense? Powerful. All right. The next thing is something called the URL. And that stands for the Uniform Resource Locator. All that means is... Yeah, it's just, it's just what this is right here, the URL. It would be crazy if you wanted to go to any other website and be like, I'm just going to go to like DKL dot, you know, like Esteban dot something dot Facebook dot com. And then if I wanted to go to a different website, I'd be like dot yo and then like dot exclamation mark at pound KL, okay, whatever, right? You'd be like, okay, this is not like rememberable. So just simply having a specific format that everyone is going to follow, so it all looks the same and it's uniform, we have something like www.whatever.com. Right? That's basically the format. Here in 2019, you can go to so many other domains, but the idea is that it's uniform so that it's easily understood by all, at least initially. Right? There have been changes to domain names recently, but this is the default format, right? The resource is exactly what we're gonna talk about. Um, as we get to RESTful routing, Sinatra and how you do your routes. Would you ever go to like ESPN.com? Some of you are into sports, and then you can just go to like, I don't know, basketball. This is like the resource. 
All right, so ESPN.com is like the domain. And then anything after that, there's a specific resource within ESPN that you want. Cool. And so this whole thing is like the uniform resource locator. Like where is this on the internet and how can I get this information? Are there any questions on URL? All right, cool. Thanks for your patience. Tactical patience. Great. So there's a couple words that we use um, that I want to drill into your heads. I know I warned you about memorizing, but this is something that you'll just inevitably wind up memorizing. But does anyone understand when we say, and we as in developers, so like welcome to the club, client and server. What is it? Yes, right. I heard a lot of things. Right. I heard a lot of things here. And so I'm just going to clarify it. I love the very powerful shouting out. Please continue. A client is going to be the user, whatever that is. So right now, I am the user. I am on Chrome, the browser. So I am the client. I'm going to send a request to Facebook. Facebook is the server. Now, when I'm building the website and you are going to my website, who's the client? Me. Yes, that's right. You are making a request to my server, my website. So I am the server now. So it's kind of context dependent. But if you are building the website, you're in charge of the database, you're in charge of like the HTML, that's the server side. The client side is anyone making the request. Cool. Let that sit in for like two seconds. This is a smart class. All right. So the request response cycle. I touched on this last week Friday, but as a very quick summary, you will always be in this cycle. You make a request. There are different types of requests that we're going to get into. And then the server will send you back a response. And so we're going to go into just a hair of code this morning, and I'll kind of point out what those differences are. But it's always a request for information, send back a response from the server. Cool? All right. We did all this. You guys want a break? No. Ah, I just powered through, huh? All right. Cool. Let's talk about where can I find documentation for the internet? There is something called the MDN the Mozilla Developer Network. They are in charge of Firefox as well as documenting web browser requests, anything that has to do with developers for developers. It's like FUBU, right? But for the internet. Okay, thank you for, for that, for some of you that understood what I'm saying. Really what it is is just, if I need to look up docs for the internet, I would start with the MDN the Mozilla Developer Network. In terms of the different types of requests that we talked about, we can look at them right here. I literally went to technologies and went to HTML, or rather HTTP, sorry. And then I could read a little bit about it. Right? Over here, something called request methods. What you'll see is you'll see a bunch of these. We're going to ignore some of them, but I'm going to highlight the ones that are really important. So we have a GET request. A GET request is simply requesting information. I'm just asking you to get me some information. Like if I go to google.com, just getting the Google HTML, the server is going to respond with HTML, and then my browser is going to go through parse that HTML and then paint it on the screen with all the JavaScript and the CSS and make it all sexy. That's it. If, however, I were to go to Google and I were to make some sort of request for information, but I also send some data, right? This right her is the data. I'm sending this over the internet, this string of text over. And I'm asking the server to take in this data and then send me a response based on this data. So I'm going to post some information to the server. This is a post request. Does everyone understand the difference between a get and a post? Does a post have a get, or is there always a get and a post? 
That's a very good question. The question is, is there, is there always a get and a post? You can only do one request at a time. So this right here is I'm going to send information over as a post. I'm going to send this string of data over. And then the server is going to respond. So it's just a post request that the server knows how to respond to. So only one request at a time. That's a very good question. That's it. If I'm asking for information and I do not send any data over, it is a get request. Cool. So uh, usually the get request is just from the client side, right? Mm. Yeah, usually. Usually the client will make all the get requests. I try to think of some weird edge cases and I was like, that's not important to talk about right now. Cool. You will just be getting a lot of information making these powerful get requests. Cool. The next one I want to talk about, right? And you can like click on it and read it. Cool. Like a get to slash index. You're already starting to see this in Sinatra. The other ones that I want to talk about is this post request. We talked about this, right? I can send data over the internet. And typically, what do I do with this data? Uh, I can store it, right? Like for example, let's just say I've never heard of this website called Facebook and I want to make a new user. I have to send my information over the scary internet, which they can then start spying on me and doing all that cool stuff. But I can just be like, hey, my name's Evans, my last name's Wangtron, this is my email address, my password is Michael, and now I can create an account. So when I send data over, usually, Usually, not always, usually what I'm trying to do is save it for later. So the internet can have it, I'm trying to save it for later. So typically the post request is associated with creating data. It's not always the case, but just in your mind for right now, a post is associated with like creating data, right? Like a new user signs up. Cool. Or like I'm on Airbnb and I'm planning my trip to Peru, which is actually true. I can like favorite my Airbnbs, right? When I favorite something, I'm actually sending data over to the server saying, hey, for my account, I want you to save this link to my account. And that way when you log in, you're not seeing it, but when I log in, I'm seeing it. Does that make sense? And so I'm gonna create a new association, a new row in the database that simply says, hey, for user nine, Evans, can you just add this extra association and that is like Evans loves this uh, Airbnb, whatever it is, all right? Cool, all right, let's talk about this next one. We have something called put and something called patch. So put and patch is more about like editing. So in a database, right, we've learned about this in mod one. Does anyone know the difference between put and patch? Does anyone know the difference between put and patch? They both update. No? Oh. <laughs> you gotta give people a chance. All right, no, 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 you're good. I'd rather the response. It's so weird when you're lecturing and it's like, hey, what's your name? <laughs> I'm like, all right, it's gonna be painful. Um, but all right, cool. So put and patch. Um, the way you can think about it is you have like rows in your database, right? How often would you say when you're editing something that you're editing every single column in the database. So for example, right, you're, uh, I keep using bookface. I don't know, what's something popular right now? Uh, I don't know, Instagram? I don't have Instagram. Cool, whatever. You have like Instagram, right? When you're editing your profile, how often would you say you're changing your username, your password, your avatar photo, all the same time? Like everything about your profile you're changing all the time, every single time you update. Like rarely, right? Basically never, right? That is known as a put. You are going to take your current existing user with your username, right? Um, your email address, your avatar photo, and you're gonna replace the entire record and put in a brand new record in that row, in that same row. So if you're user nine, 
I'm gonna replace the entire record and put something brand new in row nine. Like all the details of row nine are changed. Versus if I just wanna change the username in one column in my database, I'm just gonna, just gonna patch it up real quick, right? The username, oh, pfft, little typo in my username. It's not Wangtron 3000, it's like Wangtron like 4000, whatever. I'm just gonna patch just the username. It's gonna update that one row in the entire column. I'm sorry, I'm gonna update one column in the entire row. And so, if you were to make a default choice between put and patch for your edits, what would you do? Patch. Right. It's patch. Surprise. Right? Cool. And then there's delete. This is very complicated. It just deletes things. Right? <laughs> Committed to memory. It's very hard to memorize, but I believe in you. Cool? All right, so you notice that these HTTP verbs match up and line up with these CRUD actions. So if I need to just read some information, I'm going to do a get. I'm going to create some information. Typically, I'm making a post. If I'm ever going to edit or update, I'm going to use put or patch, typically patch. And then if I need to delete something, I'm going to, oh, look at this. Look at this lineup right here. Powerful. Delete matches up with delete, right? Very good. People like confuse get, post, put patch, but delete is always clear. I'm like, thank you. Great. So we are on currently, I know it's 2019, we're still currently using uh, HTTP version 1.1. And so, um, like spoiler alert, the internet is like, it's kind of busted. It is barely held together. You'll see this as you develop more. It's barely held together. Like any sort of typo, comma, semicolon will like break the whole thing. The internet only understands right now in HTTP version 1.1. There's a 2.0 and it's like rolling out. Before right now, it only understands get and post. So there's like really hacky things you have to do to make it do patch and delete, but we'll get there. Cool? So just understand that it only knows get and post, and you have to like trick it. You're gonna play like tricksies on your browser to do put patch and delete. Are there any questions on on the internet? Wow, this class is very good at absorbing information. Great. So let's jump into some code. Can you guys see this or is the glare? All right. Good, nice. All right. I was hoping that that was the case, because if somebody said no, I'm like, we should have said something like an hour ago. Um, great. Let's actually like walk through some code. Cool. Wait, before we get there, let's take a look at this README. This README Andrew and I put together, it's like another former instructor. Um, a lot of the Readmes you'll see, especially when you get to mod three, are like dissertations. So please just read the README. They're very good. Kind of biased, but they're very good. All right, so look, check us out. Look at this. Look at all these links on the bottom. If you have nothing else to do and you finish the labs, and you're just like waiting for us to deploy more labs, like read through a lot of these things, and you will learn so much. If you have a Markdown previewer, you can hit Control Shift M, and it'll give you like the preview. Ooh, yeah, you like that? It actually will like read your nonsense Markdown. So like if I wanted to change something, intro to the internet, just like be good, hit save, and there it is. Okay. Cool? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I didn't make it, but I'm going to take full credit for that. <laughs> so <laughs> did you guys see that cool Batman gif? Yeah. All right, look, let me show you this, this thing right here. Ready? Sharks attack underwater internet cables. Let's take a look at this. So you got to fast forward a little bit, but this shark is intense. Look at this thing. Yeah? Look at this shark. Look, this is the internet. That's the cable that literally crosses under the ocean. Yeah. No, I thought so too. And then someone in your class was very smart and said it's the heat from the cable. That they're just like, oh, that must be food. Um, and it is not. So we are constantly like trying to maintain and update the, the wires of the internet. Otherwise, like the whole thing will just go down. It's crazy. Um, so I, I put this GIF in there. <laughs> uh, Batman is trying to save the internet. But the idea here is that 
What that cable is, is this. You have this high density um, insulation, you have some copper tubing, and then just two layers of steel. You have a little petroleum jelly in there for like water resistance, some work. And then you have the optical fibers. This is literally where your data goes through, just the optical fibers. Back in the day, we used to like do dial up, right? Right, remember that? Yes. Get off the phone, mom, I'm online. <laughs> what a time to be alive, right? <laughs> the idea here is that this is where your data transfers. Cool? And the further away the server is, the slower you'll get your data. Which is why a lot of times you'll see things that are just very local. Every once in a while you'll stumble upon like a website because you're like trying to save money and then all of a sudden it just, instead of .com, it becomes like .ca. You know, like buying something from like Canada. And you're just like, hmm. But yeah, that's really about it, right? The URL, again, Canada has their own thing. The UK has their own thing. You ever seen it? Like .uk.co? Cool. Oh, y'all try to save money too? Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's really about it. Um, but let's get some code. Let's get some code. Cool. Boop, boop, boop. How's this lecture style for you guys? Is this a little different? Is it okay? All right. Cool. I'm just essentially just yelling at you for a while. All right. So we'll start with a pretty simple app, something that you should be familiar with graduating uh, mod one. And that is just going to be, I'm going to require these files, pry our best friend, and a file called song. So let's take a look at song before we get to anything else. Boop. Huh. Pretty simple, right? A little class action. What is this again? A class what? Class variable. Cool. Right? little self.all. This is before the magic of active record. Is that cool? All right. So let's go right back to app. And so I have song in here. So app is just going to have a method called call. It takes in some sort of like environment. And then all I'm going to do is open a new request and open a new response. I have some songs in here already, unless you guys want to change. You guys like have a favorite song? I just want to get to know this class a little bit. Who are you guys listening to right now? Okay. Okay. I got it. Cool. All right. All right. You're listening to his lectures on the subway. I know. They're so good. Anything else? You guys listening to any good music? Yo, Vicky Ian, what are you listening to? Please me? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I like Bruno and I don't know the song. Please me? Huh. Ian, anything? Talking Heads? I don't actually know the song, but uh, I was listening to this song right here. Okay. Oh, whoo. Almost saw that one. Did you guys see that? That was, that was sketch. That was real sketch. And then... Um, Right? Uh, these are Disney songs. All right? They're Disney songs. It's class out of control. Um, cool. Just making some new songs, no big deal. You guys know what Marie's Crisis is? Yeah. It's like a piano bar, um, and they sing a bunch of show tunes. I was there the other night. Super fun. Either way, the point is what this code is doing is if the request.path is equal to slash songs, then I want it to do this. Otherwise, if it's, so this right here, syntax, I wrote it two ways, so you can kind of see the difference. Syntactical sugar, they're the same. If it's either songs, do this. If it's artists, do this. Otherwise, do this. Right? That's like a pretty simple if-else statement. Right? So all I'm going to do is go and boop, 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 boop. Can you see that? Command K. A little clear action. And then I'm just going to simply rack up. What is it, rack up? Like this? All right. I, I forgot. I, I, I like shotgun. I'm pretty intense. Whenever I say it, I'm always like starting to serve. I'm like, let's go, shotgun. <laughs> but here, I'm just like, rack up. It just doesn't have the same, there's no power to it, you know? 
All right, what was it? Nine two nine two. What a trash port. Nine two nine two. Great. <laughs> that's weird. Um, what? That's weird. What? What is this? What's happening here? Absolutely right. It's doing this, not found, and it's loading this powerful like I don't know what happened. Image. Very good. I don't know. Like I had a class. I had a class once where I sneezed, and instead of saying the normal thing, a student was like, "Shut up!" And I was like, "All right." Um, so I started saying that, and I did it to a class, and I realized that it was not the same class that did it to me, and the student was like. <laughs> like imagine you sneeze. I was like, "Yep, very good. We got shut up," and then I kept going. That class was like, "So just so you know, I told you if I do it instinctually, uh, I'm just being silly. It'd be nice if you just shouted it right back, like, no, you.' I'd be like, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, um, great. How do I get here or here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to ask you all to do, and you'll see me, is I'm going to painfully draw it out of you because I need you to get better at speaking technically. It's going to help you with interviews, and it's going to help you explain what you're trying to do, not only to us as the instructors, but to each other. All right? So there's this teaching philosophy that's called what's right is right. And so if I were to say, how would I get to this over here? Simply saying, oh, you're going to do the slash thing. And I'm like, that's, I know where you're going. And I know where your head is at. But it's technically not right. And so the idea is that I'm going to try to draw it out of you so that you can become better at speaking technically. So in order to hit this resource, I would need to go to slash songs slash. Cool? That would be like this answer. Is that fair? So if I were to go to slash songs, oops, that's not right. What should I see? That bomb song list, right? And it's just coming out right here. Let's boom, we'll zoom action, right? <coughs> cool. Huh, that's weird. Why is it doing it twice? Hmm. Do I have extra data somewhere? No, it's just writing it twice. Interesting. Huh. That's really not important. I want to like look into that later. Yeah. Either way, the idea here is that is this dynamically rendering or statically rendering? And does anyone know the difference? Who says? Who says static? <laughs> cool. Who says dynamic? Right? Very good. The idea here is that this is dynamically rendering because it is going to a certain route and then rendering based on a database. Really? This this is kind of kind of jank, it's not really a database, but it's pulling the data from somewhere and then rendering that dynamically versus this, which is more static. And that is everything is hard coded. So the difference between this and this would be, um, I don't know, I guess I would just make it like a list item and then I would put uh, as a string, this is going to be. Uh, cool song number one. All right, so when I. Oh, that's right. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Shotgun's so much better. Cool. Cool song number one. All right. If I wanted to update this list, instead of creating new rows in the database and then having that saved somewhere and then this pulling from it, I'm going to do this. Cool song number two. This is hard coding the values, and therefore this is static. If I'm hard coding everything, it is static. It's going to be the exact same thing every single time. 
The dynamic one is pulling from a database, which can essentially change. Nothing else about my code will change. But as my data changes, the website will reflect. So it's pulling the information dynamically versus just hard coding it in here. How crazy would it be if every single website, every sing single thing you can ever possibly search for, Google was like, all right, I'm going to create an HTML file for that. All right? I can just go to google.com and just be like, great, I hope they created a separate HTML file that says, what is Vicky's favorite color? Color, color, kulu, whatever. This would be a separate HTML file that it renders based on this versus being dynamic, and that is taking over what the user sends over, the parameters that come across, and then rendering like an HTML template. Because you know it's going to give you like one, two, three, four, five, like 20 results, and then it's going to do this whole thing. This is rendering dynamically. Does that make sense? It's taking the parameters, and then it's filling in like the search results, and then it's going to send back the HTML. Are there any questions on the static versus dynamic? Any questions on what the internet is? Let's see if we, we, if we can do this. Ready? Let's take a look at that. Oh, just kidding. Let's, let's read the readme. Can you explain in general how the internet works? Yeah. Right? right? Comfortably, like it's just a bunch of wires. You make some requests. Data comes back. There's some request response cycle. IP addresses. Vinton surf, TCP IP, just like a vague understanding, right? The World Wide Web is just a bunch of computers connected, sharing data. And then what the client server model is, right? Client's making the request, the server processes it, and then sends it back. And so even in this right here, a client, right, like Chrome, will make a request to localhost 9292 slash songs. The response is going to be this HTML. And then the browser gets the HTML and then paints it to the screen. Cool? And then how to utilize a browser to make a request? You've been doing this already. Sneak attack, right? You've been like Googling things, right? And then we just kind of ran through that example with Rack. What are your questions? for the internet, rack, starting up the server. And this tilde? Nothing. This is just a syntactical sugar for it. How exactly is that match working? Is it like searching for that? Is it exactly that ending for directory location, or is it like that search? Yes, uh, it will eliminate what is known as the domain, which is local host 9292. And then anything that follows is known as the resource. So if the resource is an exact match of this string, it will process uh, this line. So we can do that. We can just go to uh, localhost. Right. 9292, right? is that what Sinatra's on? Oh, you're just kidding. Well, if it didn't find any of them, it's going to do this. But we can simply go to slash artists. And it will have this hard-coded artist list and nothing else in it. So it's just matching the resource. Cool. All right, if there's nothing else, uh, that's all I have for you this morning.